Yo, Guido coming at you with something pretty cool. We got a little sneak peek of the Onslaught mode, which is, if you're seeing this video, has just been announced. So right now I don't have a whole lot of data on exactly when it's going to be or if it's going to be a replacement for, for rank battles or in addition to or what. They're still working on all that stuff, but I just got out of a test with some of the other Watt folks and with a lot of the NACC. So... I'm going to give you a quick view of the garage and what the sum of right now the rewards are. This is all up for change and a lot of it is just placeholders. But the big picture is, and you're going to come over here, it's 7v7 at tier 10. So like most things, it will have its own little mode. You press that and they've got this pretty cool garage right here. It's night, could be dark, <laughs> and it is. So we've got that going on. You've got the little symbol up here in the middle like they usually have to get into the rest of the data for that particular mode. You will note that it is all tier 10. So we're going to click on that guy right there as you usually do with these kinds of modes and you will find that you have ranks. So you've got debutante rank, which is a kind of funny name, iron rank, bronze rank, silver rank, gold rank, that keeps doing that because I slide the mouse off there, champion rank and legend rank all right so those are all the ranks for the first four up to champion i believe there are four levels within in each one of those ranks you can see then i've played a little bit so i have 99 rating points and i need 250 to get to the iron rank as of right now it looks like you can win and lose points and they did not say that there were any fenced positions i.e. you get to a place and you can't possibly go below that 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 is as of the time of this video not going to happen but it could so we'll have to wait for the actual announcement which you will probably see if you're seeing this video okay that being said there are camos so you can see we've got the debutante camo the iron camo the bronze camo etc etc it appears there are also some rentals, Badger, IS-4, M4A5, Patton, and it looks like if you get to another level, you're, those are all camos, and some, some decals and such. All right, So you're going to get a camo for getting to each one of these ranks. There are also some rewards within those ranks that I don't have any SA on. In addition to that, there is a total number of victories reward system. All right? So however many battles it takes you, to, in this case, to get to 200, 200 victories. I'm not saying it's going to be 200. Again, this is a placeholder. They're not sure. The length of this is, they said, up to six weeks. As of the time that I'm making this video, that's what we know. Right now, the placeholder says 200. But as you trip these points, you get these goodies that you can see down here. There, there you go. So some bonds, 800 bonds, that's pretty good. Again, placeholder, I don't know. 625,000 silver, some personal reserves and some kits. We got 800 bonds again. It's pretty similar all the way through these. It's the exact same thing until 175, uh, sorry, until 200. In which case, at the end of 200 victories, there is an improved compressor, my friends. The improved turbo, uh, heretofore only available in Clan Wars, I believe, or maybe ranked, maybe it is ranked only available and ranked and this is the grind piece all right so you've got rewards for the person who you know you might be 200 wins and 800 losses but when you get to 200 wins or whatever that number is going to be you're going to get your hands on one of these things now that's a lot my friends okay so don't get too crazy at the video again it's probably been announced hopefully if the details haven't been announced then there's going to be something else coming out a little while later because I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to put out this video. So there you go. Just some generalizations to kind of think about it right there. There will be a leaderboard which will not come up, I believe, unless it's actually grabbing our stats and stuff, when I don't think it is. We'll just get out of there. So there you go. It is a ranked-esque 7v7, but it has some special kinds of things going on in it. All right. We're going to see if we can get some gameplay going here. I'm hoping the replays work. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go to my recording and mess around. But let's go check out some gameplay. All right, here is a battle on Ghost Town. You can see that we have loaded in on the tank thing. Where, which way am I going? Right there. So you can pick the tank that you want based on the map. Right now, I have the Minot Minot no, I should say Minotaur. I have the Manticore picked, but I could change that, right? So whatever you picked to go into battle, you can swap it out. 
you're in a super platoon, you can start talking about it and arrange the tanks as you want. You can see in the top left that I have our team over in the top right. We do not see anything because fog of war is on. So one way that you can get rid of fog of war is obviously to spot them. The other one is to grab the radio towers. Take a look over there on the mini map and you can see that there are some towers and there are some artillery spots. So you can go in there and grab those. It takes about five seconds. We'll show that in just a minute. In fact, we'll just get going here. And then they have a cooldown of right now two minutes. So we get the count in. You got 30 seconds to set up your team as you want right there. And off you go. The spotting towers will spot everybody on the map. The artillery obviously hits an artillery area. And you can see as I scooch over just a little bit, see that little airplane there? It's very similar to the same, well, it's the same symbol basically as frontline. And that's going to be a spotting airplane that can spot an area. That is the special power that the scouts have. Each tank has its own singular special power based on its role. So assault, heavy assault, TD, assault tank, support tank, they all have a different one. All right. So you get the cool down on that. It has levels. You can see I'm currently at level one. As you do things that are your role, i.e. I spot things, you should start to see that thing fill up and become available. I'm going to come over here. We're on Ghost Town, headed up here through the bushes. And right away, we find out exactly what is going on right there. Why? Because you can see the CS-63 has grabbed that tower point. It's now on the cooldown. See how it's dark and that will then fill in to where you can do it again. And once he hits that power, the rest of the team is exposed. The rest of the enemy team is exposed for three seconds. That brought up every one of their icons and now we know exactly what they have. They have the same capability. If you get lit randomly, it's a, there's a high chance that, that that is exactly what happened right there. Notice that as I get into these bushes, because we used that power, the spotting tower right there, and apparently they didn't because you can see that that one's not been used. The STB is on the other side of the map, Jimmy Crib over there, and they don't have a light tank, and that lit up every tank they have. So right now, I know there's nobody up there in the northeast, so I'm not worried about being spotted. This allows me then to come over here and do this. Now, this is something you would never do come out into the open like that on this map unless you knew exactly where everybody was and we found that out early early with that special power so that gives a bit of an advantage here for a light tank really any tank actually and there's a tank behind me that's getting some shots in on these guys too we're going to uh, soften them up just a little bit what you will notice then as I found or as we found while we we're playing this this is a very cap centric mode it is going to keep the fights fast and furious much like the other ranked battles and such things rampage or whatever it was called before 7v7 kind of idea really the fights tend to congregate around the cap and unfortunately that's going to make light tanks not as useful maybe as you would like potentially as a light tank player come over here and I continue to look for a shot and I'm not going to get them you will notice our M454, which is Nick Shocks. He's trying to load back in. His game crashed. This happens with these experimental clients sometimes. Now I'm going to grab that particular radio tower. You can see it's five seconds. So you wait on there. Boom. You've got it. All right. Now I've got the, the number nine going on there. And I actually used, I believe, number seven, which is the spotting airplane. So I thought I was dropping bombs on those guys but I wasn't I was just spotting them and they were already spotted so that was very useful for my team <laughs> in fact I think you're gonna see it's on a cool yeah so this number seven's on a cooldown I do have the nine available from grabbing the tower so this was like the first or second battle a little unfamiliar with what those things did so I could press the nine now to find somebody although look the STB was just lit so I think somebody actually used the power. There are little indicators up there that will let you know when somebody's used it. I'm going to head up here and try to look for some sniper shots. Our guys in the, the town are getting kind of beat up. Nick is still loading back in, so we are a little bit outgunned. And especially since I'm playing a scout and I'm kind of on the outside of the map looking for these cheeky sniper shots. Good news is that Jimmy in the STB-1 is also out of the battle-ish, although he has better opportunity for shots in there, plus he's just got a lot more DPM, better gun, everything else. So right now, not really helping my team. Come up here and look for shots. We're going to find a guy down here. 
he dies before I can do anything about it. Not much going on there. So I'm going to work my way over to the west side and see if I can't find the STB1 and see what he's doing. So we'll come back around this way pretty quickly. Nick's going to load in here in just a minute and come in and save the day. To come across here, I think I find the STB1 or somebody else does. I don't, I don't know if that was necessarily me, but he actually has pretty good spotting because I'm going to hit him and then he lights me from all the way over there. I lost a lot of camo by taking the shot, but goodness gracious, that was a ton. He misses the shot. That's good for me. Kind of go around here. He's going to dive down below that ridge right there, and then we're going to start working our way back into the battle, and it ends up being a win. I'm not going to make you go through the whole rest of it. We'll look at another battle here in just a second. All right, as I said, it's Ensk, Redshire, Ghost Town, Himmelsdorf, Cliff, and one other I can't remember right now. Was that six? I don't remember. Math in public. We're having a discussion. We all say, let's go over to the town. You can see that the cap on Ensk is right there in those buildings. You can actually get behind those buildings. We head on into town, and the, en the enemy team does the same thing. A little bit harder to grab the points. And interesting here, there's only one spotting point that's right in the middle. There are two artillery points, but they're fairly well contested. Very difficult to kind of get to either one of those without the enemy team jumping on you. The one thing we discussed, the potential for a light tank capability or a fast or medium tank, is to get to some of the out-of-the-way out of points of interest, they call them. Like that artillery point off on the east side, because everybody jumped in here, might be worth grabbing. I'm not 100% sure how powerful artillery is exactly in this mode. So we'll have to see how it plays out, whether it's worth grabbing or not. We jumped on that one and ended up grabbing that one. I'm going to get hit by Damien here. And what ends up happening on this one, I didn't even know you could do that. That is uh, Nick Shocks on that point. I had no idea that was even a possibility. So he backs up on that ramp. That is the first time I have ever seen that in a game. Pretty crazy. I get slapped by Damien trying to get away from him. Somebody used a tactical skill, the artillery strike tactical skill. You can see that. Mimi Big Boy did. So we're going to come over here and try to put a shot on that guy. Shooting heat into tracks. Always a bummer. And pretty quickly here, there's going to be a discussion as we start. As we started playing the game. This is the fourth or fifth game. We started to kind of figure out, you know what, this is very cap-centric. And putting pressure on the cap can definitely be a good idea. There's a discussion right now being made about trying to get Domo in his VZ or somebody to jump on the cap and put some pressure on him force them to come to us because we've really got them all stuck over here in the buildings. Uh, we've got a M, that's like the Object 140 sort of shooting guys on the uh, down the road right there. So I'm going to try to cross. There goes Domo. Domo's taking his VZ. He's going to go jump on the cap. I should have gone right there because I'm going to get a little bit late. I was listening to it. wasn't really thinking about it. And then someone said, you know, if we had two on there, that'd be much better. So I get slapped by him trying to get away. I'm going to get shot again in the back. Right about here. Come away with it with not very many hit points. Bam. Okay, so I survived. Now we've got two on the cap. You notice that when Domo got on, it was about minute 45, so that's how much cap time uh, it takes. Then the second tank gets on, and it drops down to 30 pretty quickly. I actually lost my cap points as I was going around the corner because I got shot in the back, but now we're sitting at 25 seconds. And even though they're not in bad shape in terms of tanks, it's 1v1, they're all clustered together and they're not going to be able to get around. One of them dies right there and we got 15 seconds. Based on what I can see, no one's coming around the corner. Their best bet was to try to gang tackle Air G right there. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and shoot Nick in the side. Now Nick's making a beeline straight for the cap because if you get onto the cap, it will stop. It will stop the cap points right there. I saw him shoot, so I'm just going to kind of mess with him to come out and shoot right there and it ends up being a cap win. Now I did I did give them a hard time when they capped earlier and then we ended up doing it but a win's a win and that's extra points. So yes you want to do damage but really in this mode it's very cap centric and if you can get a cap win like that that's nearly as good as killing them all. We were about to get to the point where we could take them all down more than likely, Nick comes around the corner, focuses me, and gets rid of me first, and then turns on the VZ after Domo takes two shots and probably wins that brawl more than likely 
but we were winning overall. There's only three of them left. So, you know, there's that argument whether you take them all down and get yourself some extra points or just take the win and move on. It's going to depend a lot on whether you're running a super platoon of seven or if you've got a platoon of two who can ensure the win or if it's just kind of randoms, maybe just grabbing the win is the best idea right there. All right, let's wrap this thing up. All right, there you go. Sneak peek of the new Onslaught mode. There's a lot of unknowns, but it uh, looks pretty cool to me. Actually, I, I liked the 7v7 ideas, uh, Rampage or whatever it was called. I don't remember what it was called. But, and the, the ranked idea of it, although ranked was, what, 10 tanks or 9 or some such uh, in there? I can't, I, can't keep it all, I can't keep it all straight. There's so many different modes. But this one is a 7v7. There are six maps as far as I know. You can run a super platoon of seven, a platoon of two, or just play solo. You're gonna go through progression. It has a ranked idea, so if you've played ranked, you get the idea of moving through ranks. There are rewards for doing so. There is an overall reward, the big thing being the, the bond turbo at the end of it. Maybe 200 wins, unknown, could be a different number depending on what they do. So you can choose a specific tank for the map that's actually pretty cool and that's one of the new things so during the countdown pick the tank you want you get a tank that or get a map that looks good for a light tank great get a map that looks good for a td great break break i think it's going to devolve down to face punching tanks but there you have it i didn't discuss this but i believe they are going to not allow chieftains 279 earlies and things like that that was my understanding but don't quote me there there are these points of interest, which are the towers and the arty. So getting yourself an arty strike, man, Wargaming just loves those things. But you know what? That's a great way to reset caps, where if people are starting to get close to capping you out, you could get your light tank or fast tank out there, grab that, and knock them down. So there could be some glove saves. And then, of course, the, the what, tower, the, I don't know, what is that, a radar or something? Observation tower, whatever you want to call it which is going to expose everybody on the map and let you know where they are in case somebody's being sneaky. Roll skills. Uh, okay, you know, each tank has one. You can tell that it, and I didn't get to go through all those. I only played eight, eight battles and I only used a few of those things, but each tank has a different one or each roll of a tank has a different one, okay? So go in there, look at the tank. Wargaming has it, actually, we'll go find that in just a second. Uh, and then you get artillery and the the observation tower thing, and then of course you've got the rank. So for example, if I'm running this thing, it is a where is the thing? The thing. Where's the thing that says the thing? I think if you do this and you go uh, research, will it tell you? I believe so. It is an assault tank destroyer. So there you go. That's the role. Each tank that is an assault tank destroyer will have its the same little role capability power whatever you want to call it again i don't have the specific list of those those things but uh there you go onslaught mode man good luck good luck we'll see what the numbers look like when they come out it's actually pretty darn fun i think it might be a little frustrating in terms of losing ground you know you have a good night and you get pretty far up there and then you have a bad night and you go down 50 points in a night that i don't i don't think that's going to be a whole lot of fun We'll see what happens though in terms of the actual uh, ups and downs. And actually, we can see this thing. There we go. So, for example, the 268.4 has straight ahead, has a cooldown of 15 seconds. For 12, 18, and 24 seconds, whatever that means, your vehicle's engine power will increase by 10%. Oh, that's right. It has levels itself and levels up as you do stuff. So, you're going to get more engine power, the repair speed will increase, and the stun duration will decrease. When the skill is active, each enemy shell that hits your vehicle reduces the remaining reload time by two seconds. Huh, interesting. Well, there you go. So taking hits helps. Reference my discussion earlier about Mongo Smash giving you points and whatnot. Look what else we got here. Let's just, what about scouts? What do they get? Scouts have recon flight. Ah, there you go. Recon, so much like the observation tower. Recon aircraft will fly over the selected area within two seconds enemy vehicles detected within the radius remain you know what i might have actually done a recon flight on that one and not an arty strike that's probably what that was <laughs> all right there you go awesome onslaught mode guys we'll see you out there